In this video, I'll be showing how to use p-values in hypothesis testing. The rule basically states that if p-value is smaller than a specified significance level alpha, the result is significant and the null hypothesis should be rejected. In this question, we are required to select all cases where the null hypothesis should be rejected, that is, where p-value is less than alpha. And that applies in option 2, 3, 4, and 6 here. That is, we reject the null hypothesis in all those cases. For this second question, we have a left tilde Z test with a test statistic of negative 1.87. And we want to determine if the null hypothesis should be rejected at each of these significance level. Since it is left tilde, we have a Z value here, a test statistic of negative 1.87. So this area here is the P value. Of course, we could find critical values for each of these here. For example, we could find critical value for alpha equals 0 0.025. That would be negative 1.96. And we can find critical value for this one. It's going to be negative 1.645 and so on. And if we use critical values, we can compare this test statistic against these critical values. The issue with that is we have to find critical value for all of the significance levels every time. But if we use p-values, we just need to find our p-value once for this test statistic and then compare it against these significance levels. So in Excel, we can use norms.dist. And then we put the test statistic, negative 1.87. And then cumulative, we can type true or 1. So that is the p-value. So we just need to determine which of these alpha is this p-value less than. So we have a p-value of 0 0.03. And then we want to see if p-value is less than all these alphas. So we can see that p-value is less than this alpha, is less than this alpha. And that's it. If alpha were given to be 0 0.05, we would have rejected the null hypothesis. But if alpha were given to be 0 0.025, we would not have rejected the null hypothesis. This next example is a two-tilde example. So we have a test statistic of 2.88. So we have Z, we have 2.88 here somewhere. And if we find the area in this tilde here, we can input 2.88 here. And what we have here is about 0.998. Now remember, that is the less than area. So the area in that right tail will now be found by taking 1 minus the less than area. So we're looking at an area here of about 0 0.002. So this area is the area in the right tail. But the p-value for this test, because it's a two-tail test, the p-value has to be two times that area. So we have to do two times about that 0 0.002, which is about 0 0.004. So in this case, we have this p-value, and we just want to see which of these alphas are greater than this p-value? That is, for which of these should we reject the null hypothesis? So we can see the p-value we have is less than this alpha, it's less than that, it's less than all the alphas here. So in all these cases, we would have rejected the null hypothesis. Now let's look at a T example. So here we're looking at a left tail T test with degrees of freedom 14 and we're given the T statistic to be negative 1.937. So again, if we draw that, we will have negative 1.937 on this side and this area here will be the p-value. So we can look that up in the table or we can just use Excel. So we're going to go into Excel and use the function equals t dot dist, that is t distribution. So it's asking for our t value, which is going to be negative 1.937, and then the degrees of freedom, which is 14, and then cumulative is always true here. So we will enter that. So that gives us the area in the left tail, which is the same as our p value in this case. So let's just say 0.037. So again, we can compare that to these alphas. We can see that 0 0.037 is less than that first one and is also less than this last one. So in those cases, we would have rejected the null hypothesis. Now, if this had been a two-tailed test, we would have multiplied this area by two 
to obtain the p-value. So in that case, our p-value will be about 0 0.074, and we wouldn't reject the null hypothesis at alpha equals 0 0.05. So let's look at another way the t-distribution can be used here for a right tail test. Here we're looking at a T test. It's a right tail test. We have a test statistic of 2.015 and this right tail area should be a P value because it's a right tail test. If we go in here and put in that positive value there, it will give us the less than area, degrees of freedom 15, and that will give us the left area which we need to subtract from 1 in order to get the right tilled area. So that gives us this right tilled area of uh, 0 0.031. This p-value is less than this alpha is less than that alpha. Now again, if this were a two-tailed test, we can simply multiply that area in the tail by 2, or we can also use the two-tailed counterpart of the function. So we can use t.dist, to tail. So in that case, we're just going to put in 2.015 degrees of freedom 15 if it were a two-tail test. And we also have the right tail counterpart, t dot this right tail here, which we could have also used for the test, 2.015 and degrees of freedom 15. And that would give us that same p-value as well. And that's it.